Hey guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my channel. I come to you today from the high tunnel. So today I am down in the high tunnel and I have a bunch of work to do in here today. I have some more trellising to do, tying up tomatoes and a ton of pruning. But before we get into that, I thought I would just show you the entire high tunnel from the inside and the outside and explain to you why we have built it the way we have, why we chose the location that we did, and some of the things that we've had to troubleshoot since getting the high tunnel set up. Gardening in this has been such a different experience for me than any other type of gardening I've done, even other types of greenhouse gardening. You guys are familiar with my little greenhouse that is up by the um, big garden. And in that I have been growing tomatoes and usually cucumbers and a few other odds and ends over the last couple of years. And that has been an entirely different growing experience than this. I had an assumption for some reason that that little greenhouse, especially because it is facing, one of its sides is facing south, that it would be way hotter and that the way that I had been managing the temperature in there would work for this greenhouse. And that is not the case at all. This is basically like a giant magnifying glass. And when the sun hits it, the temperature rises in here incredibly quickly. So I've had to find ways to keep the temperature down in here on the really hot days and I think I finally have that dialed in. Before we get into all of those details, let's go outside and I'll maybe we'll start on that side and I'll show you where um, we have this located and why we chose this spot. So the first thing is we really wanted the high tunnel to be located close to the main garden just to make all of the growing space all together so it was really easy to navigate through i get from one place to the other one of the things that we still need to do is to build some stairs going down here with a gate off of the main garden because currently i still have to go out that gate and walk all the way around and then come down here which is fine it's good for the extra exercise but i do want to make it a little bit more um, efficient so we built this area dan used um, the grader to make this road and then we're gonna have a gate here but right now it's just fenced off. So we have this area so that we can drive our tractor up and into the double doors here. And that way it makes it really easy to bring amendments into there. And also if we decide we want to till it, I'm leaning towards no till, but if we decide we want to, then it's easy to get in there and do that. So that is why we've done it this way. And then over on this side, we have a single door here and I'll talk more about why there's only a single door on this side. A gate here that's easy to get wheelbarrows through and then we have put our compost pile right here so that it's really easy to move compost into the high tunnel. I'm standing in the hay field right now and as you can see we have page wire fenced all the way around the greenhouse and that is because once we bring our hay up off the hay field we use this area for grazing and we do not want cows to get up into the high tunnel. As you can see, Dan had to move a ton of earth in order to put this here. So it was a lot of work and we don't want to have to do it again. So we really tried to think of everything we could as far as the location, creating the best spot for it um, that we could. So we would never have to do this again because this was a lot of work. We positioned our greenhouse. So this side is facing east, south, west, and north over on this side. And, um, the reason that we did that, and this is after consulting with a lot of different people that have grown in high tunnels in my area, is that our sun is super high during the summertime and it basically goes right over top of the entire high tunnel. So I'm not having any issues with heavy sun exposure on one side and not on the other side or anything like that. I'm not looking to grow in this greenhouse during the winter time. I'm only looking um, at it from a microclimate to create a nice hot environment for the heat loving plants during the summer and a season extender on both sides of um, the summertime. So in the spring and in the fall, if I were looking to try to grow in here during the winter time, I would definitely have situated it so that one side was facing south, but we are hoping to build a wallapini style greenhouse, which is a four seasons greenhouse for growing in the winter time. And that's something we're hoping to do within the next couple of years. One of the other reasons that we did it this way is because we have prevailing winds that usually come in from the south or the southeast. So when I open up both of the doors, I get a nice breeze going all the way through here, which really helps to keep the temperature down. That was probably one of the wisest decisions we made as far as how we situated this greenhouse because man oh man, it gets hot in here. <laughs> it's actually starting to warm up in here quite a bit now. So now let's talk about regulating the temperature. So I just mentioned the prevailing winds and having the door on this side 
and then the door on this side to be able to have air circulation in here. And that probably brings up why we don't have double doors on this side. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but that is because we are going to be putting a wood stove in here to keep our nighttime temperatures up when it starts cooling off in the early autumn. So this wall will actually be plywood with a wood stove here. That's why there isn't a double door. Originally we were gonna put in a double door, but when we decided to add the wood stove, we changed the design like this. So that's one of the best ways that we regulate the temperature in here. But one of the other ways is with the use of a shade cloth. I'm not sure what the percentage is of this. It came with the high tunnel and we got this second hand, but it seems to be doing the job perfectly. Everything's growing really well. So I'm getting enough light in, in it. And what a difference this shade cloth makes, huge difference. I took this off during a cloudy day a couple of days ago and then the sun came out and by the time I got up here out here I think it was almost 45 degrees Celsius in this greenhouse and that is with just I think it was probably 18 or 19 degrees outside so it's like I said it's like a huge magnifying glass and so that is another awesome way to regulate the temperature in any greenhouse but especially in a high tunnel and then the third way, these um, roll up sides, this is just a temporary um, situation that Dan has here. He has a whole plan for how he's gonna make this so it's really easy to operate. But right now he just has a hook with a chain and that holds the handle down. This rolls up, I'm not gonna show that now because I don't have it all set up to make it easy to do that. But this rolls up and I can bring the side of the greenhouse up to about here on both sides and then that allows the breeze to go across. But since I have put the shade cloth on, I actually haven't had to use the roll up sides. I do know when we start seeing the 30 degrees Celsius temperatures that we sometimes see in the summertime, I'll definitely have to roll those up or I will bake the plants. So one of the issues with overheating your greenhouse is you can actually sterilize your flowers and not end up with a crop at all. So it's really important to regulate the temperatures if you can. So now let's get into the trellising system that I have in my greenhouse. This is fairly low tech, but it works really well. I use yarn to trellis up all of my tomatoes and I have a bunch of different reasons why I like using yarn. I like using cotton yarn because it is biodegradable. I like using it because it's really soft on the plants and doesn't cut into the tomatoes. I like it because it's colorful and whimsical and I just like the added color into the greenhouse. What was the other reason? Oh, and because it's super cheap. It just costs a buck or two for a roll of yarn like this and um, it will last me for at least a couple of years. So for all those reasons, I love using yarn. The reason that I didn't use yarn for these tomatoes is because I would have had to string it way up on the top there and I was a little bit worried that it just wasn't gonna be strong enough. Over on this side, I've attached the yarn either to the bar that's there or to a piece of baling twine that I have running across the top. Baling twine is super strong. So I just attached it to the posts all the way along and then I have strung off the um, yarn from that and they're super sturdy. And the way that I do this, is I wrap the um, yarn around the bottom of the tomato down here. And then as the plant grows, I just continue to wrap it around the tomato. Sometimes I leave a little bit too much slack and they kind of flop from side to side a little bit, but then I just tighten it up on the top and that pulls everything nice and straight. So this is a trellising system that works really well for me in my greenhouse. This greenhouse is 20 feet across and 60 feet long. And I did four beds um, that I think they're about four, three to four feet across. They're not all perfectly sized because I didn't measure everything out. I just wanted to make sure that I could fit a wheelbarrow in between the rows for harvesting and pruning and all of that kind of stuff. And so far this is working really well the way that I have this set up. We'll see when everything gets a little bit bigger if it still works as well as this, but so far so good. The soil that I've used, I took a compost pile that I'd been working on for the last year or two and I moved it in here. It was a huge pile like the one that I showed you outside and flattened it out and then Dan came in with the tiller and tilled everything in and then I've top dressed all of these beds with partially um, rotted compost, the pile that, I, that you saw out there, which is actually from this year. But I turn my piles regularly or I stick my hay forks in and lift it up to aerate it and it breaks down really, really fast. I don't put the compost or turn the compost into the soil. I just use it to top dress because it's still a little bit too hot for that. 
but it works super well for fertilizing my greenhouse. So that's all the only treatment I am planning on doing on these tomatoes. I'm not fertilizing them in any other way. That's not entirely true. I did use the egg trick from Roots and Refuge where I cracked an egg. You don't wanna put an egg that's not cracked. Otherwise you could end up with a smelly mess in the fall in the bottom of each one of these tomato plants. The tomato plants really like calcium. So it's a trick that she mentioned. She said she swears by it and she grows amazing tomatoes. So I did use that trick in here, but outside of that, that's all I'm planning on doing as far as feeding um, my tomatoes in my greenhouse. Now we'll chat about watering. I hand water the greenhouse and I'm watering it about every two days. And I basically hold the hose for 10 seconds per plant. That's my system and it seems to work. Everything's growing well. Eventually I would love to have drip line in here. That is probably the best way to water a greenhouse, but our water is quite silty here. And I did try with a drip line, but it just, the silt just plugged it up. So Dan's plan is he's going to put a water filtration set up right here so that I can have drip line in here. The, I don't actually mind um, hand watering that much, but it is time consuming. It takes me about an hour to water this greenhouse. And I have a lot of other things that I need to be doing in a day. So that is the long-term goal for this greenhouse, but hand watering it's working fine for now. One of the other things that's required as far as maintenance is pruning. There is so much pruning to have to be done. I'm trying to pick off the suckers and I'll show you the, that what that is every day when I walk through, but I spend probably at least an hour or two out here once a week doing heavier pruning. So I'm going to show you, see if I can find one that needs a good prune so that I can show you how I do it and why I do what I do. Let's see here. Okay, so these are my bush tomatoes that are running down here. Most of these are Manitoba bush tomatoes. I have a couple of other varieties that are interdispersed in here, but I am so far loving the Manitoba bush tomato. They were the most vigorous when I started them from seed. They looked the healthiest when I got them into the greenhouse. The color on them was fabulous. And I cannot believe the amount of tomatoes I already have on here and the size of them. The Manitoba bush tomatoes are a bush tomato, which means that they are a determinant. The difference between determinant and indeterminant, determinant is a plant that has basically a predetermined height. It's not gonna grow on forever in the way an indeterminate tomato will, will or it'll just keep vining and vining and vining until the end of the season. These bush tomatoes grow around five feet when they're at their maximum height and then they stop growing. I haven't grown bush tomatoes before, so I did ask several people about the pruning techniques for growing them. And the consensus seems to be is to allow at least two um, leaders, and that means two large main branches, uh, like you can see over here, this is a good example, off of here, so here's one and two, and then to pinch off all of the suckers. A sucker is this plant part right here that's growing out of the V. So there'll be the side branch, the leaf that comes off the side, and then the part where the leaf attaches onto the main stalk. And then a little plant will usually grow out of that spot. And you wanna pluck those ones off. You also want to grow off or pick off any of the suckers that come off of the bottom here. Sometimes you'll get them growing out from the base or the roots where you buried it, uh, the plant underneath the ground. Sometimes you'll get suckers off there too. So you wanna break those off. I, like I mentioned before, I'm also pruning fairly heavily on the back side of this trellis because one of the things that you do want in with any plant, but with tomatoes in particular is really good airflow. It helps to keep down on um, some of the common tomato issues like blight. Fortunately, we do not have blight in our area and I could not be more grateful for that. I think our climate is just too dry for it, but airflow is super important. One of the other things that is important for managing your tomatoes is to keep all of your leaves from touching the ground. You can see here that I've pruned up fairly high on some of these tomatoes. Um, that's going to be one of my main pruning things that I do today is because a lot of the leaves have grown really large and are now touching the ground. So I have to go along and do a pretty hard prune on the bottom half of my tomatoes to get all the leaves from touching the ground. The biggest issue with that is blight, but there are some other tomato diseases that can come in, um, from the ground. So it's a good idea and a good practice to keep all of your leaves off of the ground. And one of the other ways that you can help your tomato plants is by not getting the green wet. 
It's one of the reasons why the drip hose works so well. When you're pruning, make sure that you don't take too much off so that the sun can get in and actually hit the tomatoes too directly because you can actually sunburn your tomatoes that way. I think it's called sun scald is what I think it's called, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So um, because I have a shade cloth on here, I don't really have to worry about that that much. But if you are growing tomatoes outside or in a greenhouse that doesn't have a shade cloth, then that's something to keep in mind. So I am going along and pulling off all the suckers. I think I'm gonna leave this one. Everybody has a little bit of a different way to prune and I find that you just kind of find your own, I don't know, rhythm to it or technique to it, uh, depending on the way you like your tomato plants to look even. And right now I'm looking at this one and I have the two main branches off of here, one here and one here. But I have this beautiful one that's coming out of the top and so I think I'm going to leave this one. It also has quite a few flower um, buds on there already. So I think I'm going to leave that one. But I like the way that this tomato plant is looking. There's nothing touching the ground. There's beautiful tomatoes under there. Um, this leaf is protecting the tomatoes. And I just feel like there's quite a bit of air circulation in there. So you'll really figure out your own technique once you get um, doing this. But as long as you stick to a couple of good practices, keeping your leaves off the ground, making sure that you pinch off your suckers on your plants, you'll probably be just fine. Okay, so I have all of the ones pruned along this side and halfway up this aisle, but it's lunchtime, so I need to head in the house and plus I'm getting really hot so I'm gonna wait until it cools down a little bit in here. I hope you enjoyed this video everyone and maybe learned a thing or two. If you have any questions about the high tunnel or growing tomatoes or peppers or anything like that drop those in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer those questions in an upcoming video on the high tunnel greenhouse. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!